Okay. Don't write anything right now. Okay. I, I'm gonna have you jot some things down. Um, go ahead and, and make a note, make an entry of, about limiting reactant. Just write that word or term rather, limiting reactant. Okay. Get that on your paper and then put your writing utensil down and listen and focus and burn a brain cell. Okay. Here's, here's what I want to say to you about limiting reactant. This is our chocolate chip cookie recipe we looked at the other day. Yes. yes? So we have these quantities that go together in these amounts. Um, for example, we explored the fact that we have a, a two egg to one cup butter ratio. Yes? That exists inside of this uh, makes three dozen chocolate chip cookie recipe. Yes? This is how we sort of established the beginning of stoichiometry. We said it's all about ratios. How many of this compared to how many of this, and then we can figure out from there how many grams, how many liters, whatever. Okay? It's all about ratios. This, these numbers are like the mole ratio that is inside a balanced equation. So if we were going to write the chocolate chip cookie recipe like an equation, linear like this, as opposed to vertical like this, we could put one cup butter per 0.5 cups white sugar per, do you understand, like the, yes, ratio, 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 and then the right facing arrow, three dozen cookies, okay? So how many of this do we need for every so many, how many of these? If I want to increase the recipe by three, how much of this do I need? I've got to increase it by three, et cetera, et cetera, okay? The idea of a limiting reactant, and the reason why I took just a minute to, to look something up on the computer prior to starting today, this is a, it, it, it is a crucial concept. Ideally, it is a concept that I would love for you to know prior to going to college chemistry. And I'm a, I'm a bit of a gambler, and I'm taking a bit of a gamble by not teaching you limiting reactants in a classic way. We're going to talk about it briefly right now so that you will have seen it in the event it happens to be on the SOL test. It has been a couple years since there's been a limiting reactant question. It's pretty complicated. It's not terribly hard, but it's complicated. That is to say, in order to do a limiting reactant, in order to determine the limiting reactant for something, you have to do several different individual sets of stoichiometry conversions. Then you take the results and you compare them to each other. Okay? It's more important for me that we don't spend a lot of time on this because there are other things that we have not yet discussed that are definitely on the test. Do you understand? So I have just now, made the decision to sort of skip limiting reactant, but I want you to see it, okay? And some of you guys that are, that are super high level, um, and you're just super high level thinkers, etc., if, if the question comes up on the SOL test, you, you will probably be able to work through it. Um, if you super pay attention and can remember what I say today, pretty much all of you could probably work through it, True. should it happen to appear on the SOL test, okay? Now, when we first looked at the chocolate chip cookie recipe, and I said, if we start with, if we can put all this together and make three dozen cookies, and then I said, if I want to make six dozen cookies, how many cups of chocolate chips do I need? You guys said to me, four, because you increase the yield, you increase the amount that you want to get by a factor of two, so you increase this particular ingredient by a factor of two, yes? Okay? So that is chocolate chip cookie stoichiometry. That's what I said to you the other day. And that's what we're doing when we take a balanced equation and we say two moles of this for every three moles of this, the coefficients from the equation. The idea of limiting reactant is if I had these, and this is the first question here, if I had these ingredients exactly as written in the quantities written, could I make four dozen cookies? Now, don't play the game of, well, you can make them smaller. If we had the specific, no. No, no because this... Uh, man, you're a wizard. Because all of these yield 
exactly this. Uh -huh. Yes? Yeah. And we have a sort of a standard cookie size, if you will, okay? Different people do make cookies in different ways. In my house, they're super big. In people's houses, they're real tiny. I don't know what that's about. You just have to eat more of them, okay? So we could not make four dozen cookies. Now, look at the recipe. Look at the second question here. Mm -hmm. Don't blurt out an answer. Oh. Mentally munch on it just a minute. Okay? If we had six eggs, so think about we have more eggs by a factor of what? If we, had what? If we have six eggs, we have how many factor times three. more? Factor three. Okay, so we have three times more eggs than we need, correct, for a single recipe. Could we make nine dozen cookies? If we had six eggs, listen to my words. If we had six eggs, mm -hmm. could we have could we make nine dozen cookies? Potentially, if we had an unlimited amount of everything else. Yes. Now, answer the question as it's written. If we had six eggs, which is three times as many eggs as we need, but only twice as much of everything else. So everything else besides eggs was increased by a factor of two. Could we increase the total recipe by a factor of three? No, because we wouldn't have enough of all this other, correct? In that scenario, in that scenario, the everything else, the butter, the sugar, the sugar, the extract, flour, soda, salt, and chocolate chips, in that scenario, those ingredients become limiting. Our relative small amount of those limit how much we can get at the end. We can have nine dozen eggs, but if we only have twice as much of everything else, everything else limits how much product I can get. Do you understand? Remember, the ingredients that are in a recipe are like reactants. So anything, if we have an equation, we have the left side, which is the reactants. We have the right side, which is the products. Anything that is over here that dictates, that determines, that limits how much of a product we can get, that thing is called a limiting reactant. And pretty much in all equations, pretty much in all amounts of chemistry, any kind of chemistry you do, you typically have a particular amount of something we say that that's the limiting reactant, and the thing, the other thing that you have is said to be in excess. As we've made our way through these stoichiometry problems, you guys have seen that phrase. You do such and such, you such and such, in excess oxygen, in excess CO2, whatever. You guys have written it probably three or four times. That's what that means, okay? So the idea of the limiting reactant is determining through stoichiometry if we've got two reactants and we have this much of this one and this much of this one, which of them limits? Which one of them determines how much product you can get? Okay? Now, you still don't need to write, okay? So most of the time in chemistry we have more of one reactant than we need um, in order to completely use up the other reactant, okay? That reactant, the one that we have more of than we need, is said to be in excess, which means that there's too much. The other reactant, the one that limits how much product we can get, um, oh, there's a stop sign. If the volume's up, it might be loud. Pray yourself. <laughs> so, well, I, sh I, could, I knew it was coming, but I didn't know if it was. We watched a video this morning in ecology about cheetahs. Precious. Did anybody see national news last night? Oh, ten cubs, two litters of five, born in Front Royal, Virginia, part of the Smithsonian project. Fresh. They're fresh. They're three weeks old. I might show you later. No, 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 no. The baby colored my boys. They grow up and eat me. That's what I want. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't, I need like I don't want to play with the cheetah. If we have time in any class, I'll show it to you guys. Remind me, it's like it's like three and a half minutes long. It's the, oh my gosh, they're freaking so long. No, we don't really always talk. Okay, stop. Okay. Stop. Stop.
Okay, so the other reactant, the one that limits how much product we get, is the limiting reactant. Once that amount runs out, the whole reaction stops. We can have the other one in excess all day long. We can have barrels of it. But if we have a particular reactant that there's only there's a finite amount, then the reaction is going to stop when that particular amount is used up. Okay? Um, you know, I think let's copy this screen. I think this is a legitimate, probably a good summary. Not that we're done talking about it necessarily, but I think this would be good to write. Video games have prepared me for this. This is like every video game ever. What are you saying? Okay, have you ever played, uh, I don't know, the simplest survival game in the world, Minecraft? No. Okay. Um, let's say, wait, wait. you sort of try to bold, underline, highlight, something, okay? serve in a particular office, then you don't run. If you would like to serve in a particular office, then you run. If you don't win, you don't win. Okay, great. Okay, okay. Pretty sure Will Russell's running for vice president against uh, Randy Crutchfield, who's like... A valedictorian? I mean, I don't know, but she's like... She's going to get out of the plane. She's going to, like, she's running for so president. So, could he, like, way maybe lose? Just Mike? But he thinks he would like to do it, so he's like, I'm going to go for it. I said, I think you should, son. I got your back. Isn't the president of your class when you're a senior you're supposed to do like the, the readings. readings and stuff? Yeah. Not the SCA president, the senior class president. Duncan is not doing class offices. That's not what she's recruiting for right now. This is school-wide office. The senior class president for which Abram Clear, I think, is current senior class president, is in charge of your class forever. No, 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 it's not Abram Clear. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hannah is SCA president. That's what I'm trying to say. If you're one, you can't be the other two, right? Is that right? Like, if you're SCA, like, school president, you can't be, like, same class. Abram ran for SCA. Right, but he's didn't win. He didn't win. Right, 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 right. So then he ran for class president the next year. We choose those in the fall. Right? Isn't that... Y'all been in school here? It's long time. I'm pretty sure we choose them in the fall. Yeah. yeah. Boat and home room and all that. I just put that on the list. No, SCA president is a school-wide office. Pardon the interruption. Class president With is just Elizabeth Gentry, Emily Schramm, Heidi Adams, Jacob Hall, Molly Yates, Sadie Yates, and Will Russell. Please report to the library. Thank you. City Pete's? She can call Crutchfield. 
be a public restaurant. I don't know. Anyways, around the period, you need to come to that determination, like, by the end of the block. Okay? Much on it. Last, uh, yes. Dungan is currently setting up the candidates, determining who are the candidates for the school-wide offices. So class offices are not being determined now. Rakesh, so if you chose to participate, that is what you would be doing, would be school-wide office is what you'd be going for. Rakesh? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now, listen up. Uh, listen up. So, limiting reactants, if you're not a limiting reactant, you are in excess. Yeah. Okay? Now, listen to my words. We're going to go through an example. Unless you have a burning desire to do so, you do not have to write it down. I do need you to focus. I do need you to focus. I reserve the right to make you write it down and learn it. I just, I think, I think we're better served not. Okay? Do we have to state the limiting reactant? Is that something that we'll have to do? That's what I'm trying to say. Is I, that's what I have not seen on the SOL in some time, which is why I'm not. Is there a possibility of there being more than one limiting oh. reactant? Let's say that you have to have no. two of this. No, 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 no. So if you have a reaction uh -huh. that has four reactants mm -hmm. in particular quantities, only one of them can actually be the limiting reactant. Okay. So even though the other ones would be determined to be in excess, they may not be unlimited. There may not be an unlimited supply. They may not be in excess forever. Um, but there is one that will determine when the reaction stops. And that is the limiting reactant. Okay? Now... This is, we're going to make our way through the practice problem, okay? And everything's going to be shown to you. I'm going to try to summarize this as quickly as I can, okay? When you're finding the correct answer, that is usually the question is, what is the limiting reactant? Here's your scenario. Here are some numbers. Here's the balance equation, blah, blah. Which one is the limiting reactant, okay? That is the question. That's the answer that you're looking for. What you have to do is you have to calculate how much of a single product. And the thing about limiting reactant problems is, you look at the products that are there, and you choose one. You choose one. For me, I always look at the products that are given to me, and I choose the one that has the easiest molar mass to figure out. Because there's a touch of lazy in everybody. <laughs> okay? So if one of the products is O2, and another product is uh, C2H5O11... Okay, I'm like, um, I can do O2, it's 32. Like, I already know it. Do you understand what I'm saying? It doesn't matter which one you choose, but you pick a product, and what you do is you say, okay, if I start with this much of this reactant, how much of that product, the one that I chose, how much of that product can I get? If I take this amount of this other reactant, and I do the stoichiometry, how much of that same product can I get given that particular reactant? So all you're doing is stoichiometry, you, do, you have to do as many stoichiometric calculations as you have reactants. Usually it's two. Okay, these are usually not super complex problems, like six things on the left, that's insane. We just don't, I mean, you get in college maybe, but we don't, we don't bother with that right now. Okay, so the, whichever reactant makes the least amount of product, that reactant is the limiting reactant, the correct answer. Okay? Once you've determined the limiting reactant, if you have to make any calculations, if you have to say exactly how much product you're going to get, because sometimes they'll say that. What is the limiting reactant? And how much product can you get? You figure out which one's limiting, and then you say, okay, if I have this much of this, it is the limiting reactant, and I can make 18 moles of this other, or 27.3 grams of this other. Okay? Um, you always have to be sure that you pick a single product. I can't say if I start with this much of this, I'll get this much of product A. And then if I start with this much of this, I get this much of product B. That is apples and oranges. You have to be comparing to the same thing each time. Okay? And again, 
two people can do a limiting reactant product and go to different, I mean, limiting reactant problems and go to different products and get the same answer. Okay, it doesn't matter which one you choose, which product you choose. So here's an example, okay? I've got 10 grams of aluminum reacting with 35 grams of chlorine gas. We are making aluminum chloride. This is a synthesis reaction. Aluminum plus chlorine yields aluminum chloride. The question, which reactant is limiting? Which one is in excess? It's going to be the other. Okay? And how much product is produced? How much product is produced is based on which of them is limiting. Here's our balanced equation. Okay? We look at aluminum first. We convert grams of aluminum. This is stoichiometry like we did yesterday. Grams of aluminum into grams of aluminum chloride. We get 49.4 grams. If I start with 10 grams of aluminum, I can make 49.4 grams of aluminum chloride. Then we look at chlorine. Chlorine is the other reactant. So our question is, aluminum and chlorine, which one's limiting? Which one's in excess? Okay? So we look at chlorine. We set up our problem. We start with 35 grams of chlorine. How much of the same product can we make? If we have this much chlorine to start, this is how much product we can get. Which of them is in the smaller amount? Which one makes the smaller amount? I don't know why it keeps going. Oh, I guess it's all... See, I just clicked one time. I bet it keeps coming. The chlorine is the limiting reactant because it makes the smaller amount. Oh, hello. Chlorine, limiting reactant. Which means then that this thing, which you can't see anymore underneath here, aluminum is then what? In excess. The excess. And then the answer to the question, how much product is produced, the limiting reactant allows for 43.9 grams of aluminum chloride to be produced. So the answers are limiting reactant, chlorine, excess reactant, aluminum, amount of product produced is the amount that is produced from the limiting reactant. Okay? So this is the same example. This is what we just said. Yeah, yeah, move on. Nope. 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 Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is limiting reactant in a nutshell. Now, we're moving on. Start writing.